Hi guys, this is a short video about the AKT or Applied Knowledge Test exam, part of the MRCGP qualification. What we're going to cover, what the exam is, when do you apply, how do you apply, when should you take it, what the best preparation methods are, what the best resources might be, some of our resources that we can help you with, and a bit about my own experience of the AKT exam itself. I'm Amanora, I'm a GP and a medical educator, and hopefully this video is going to be of some value to you if you're preparing for the AKT. Let's get started. So as I mentioned, the AKT or Applied Knowledge Test is one of three components of your MRCGP qualification in the UK. The other two being WPBA, which is Workplace Based Assessment, and CSA or your Clinical Skills Assessment Exam. We'll talk about those in a different video. The AKT is a test of not just knowledge and retention of knowledge, it's application of knowledge. So look and see when you're thinking about being a GP or working in a GP setting, are you thinking along the lines of a GP? Can you problem solve in the way that a GP should be thinking as opposed to just someone who retains lots of information but can't put that into practical working life? So it's not just a, a knowledge test, it's the applied knowledge test. It's in the name itself. It's a three hour, 10 minute exam and it covers 200 questions. So it gives you about an average of 57 seconds per question. Obviously some take a little bit less, some take a little bit more, but on average you've got that. You've got a timer on your screen so you can judge yourself as to how far you are and how long you should be at certain parts of the exam. You're only eligible to sit the AKT exam from ST2 year onwards, so ST2, ST3, and ST4 in some circumstances, but you can't take it in ST1. That's a common question that people ask. You can take it at over 100 different exam centres across the UK and you can take it a maximum of four times. Some people do get a, a fifth attempt in certain circumstances, but generally most people will have four attempts at the AKT. The AKT can be sat at three different times in the year, usually around the January, April and October time. They can vary a little bit, but tend to be around those three slots. So you can take your pick as to when you feel ready and when you can take the exam. There are three main areas that are tested. 80% of your questions are going to be on clinical medicine and clinical problem solving questions. 10% of your questions are going to be on critical appraisal, evidence-based practice, so statistics in essence. And the final 10% are going to be based on administration or management issues within general practice. There are different types of questions that you'll come up against. Single best answers are by far the most common type of question, so usually one answer out of five. You have EMQs or extended match questions and these are when you get a whole series of sometimes up to 20 different answers and you might have two or three questions related to those answers and you're going to again pick the one that suits best. And there are other types of questions that come as well, multiple best answers where you might need to pick a couple of answers or free text questions where you need to enter your own um, and there's a few additional ones but generally you're going to get mostly your SBA, single best answers and your EMQs, your extended matching questions. A lot of people ask if there is an online calculator. The answer is yes, you do get one on screen that you can use in some of the statistics-based questions uh, if you need it. Another common question is about pass marks. The pass marks vary from exam to exam, but if you look back in history, they tend to be sort of late 60%, early 70%. It does depend on difficulty of exam, and each one is gonna be slightly different. In terms of how to book, you can only book the exam via the RCGP website itself. Bookings tend to open up around seven to eight weeks before each exam period, and they tend to remain open for about five to six days, giving you a bit of a window to get that booking in. And once you've made your payment and booked the exam, you are then allowed to choose a test center that is most convenient for you geographically. Now, I commonly get asked, when should I take the AKT? There seems to be a, a trend now of people taking it earlier and earlier. Certainly when I did the AKT, most people were doing it in early ST3, or a few of them were doing it in late ST2. But now you'll find that a lot of people are doing it earlier and earlier in their ST2 year, perhaps the first available sitting in January or even October if you're an August to August trainee. There's a couple of advantages obviously of doing it earlier. ST3 is a busy year, so leaving AKT alongside CSA, alongside all your work-based assessment and out of hours, can make ST3 quite busy and quite stressful. So a lot of people do like to get it out of the way in STT, but a lot of people do leave it to that second sitting in ST2 because ideally a bit of GP experience is useful for when you do this exam because you are thinking in the GP mindset. But we are seeing a lot of people do it early in ST2. A lot of people do pass it, but a lot of people do struggle as well. And some of the reasons that people might struggle is the fact that maybe you're doing a hospital job that doesn't allow you to prepare in terms of time, so A&E, acute medicine, something like that, where you're, you know, you're under the pump all the time at work. It could be that because you haven't done that GP placement, you haven't got that GP mindset yet. So, you know, in order to think about some of the questions and problem solve, you need to be in that zone of thinking as a GP. And if you're thinking in hospital uh, medicine terms, you can uh, alter the way you think and perceive things, I guess, in terms of selecting the most appropriate answer. 
I suppose sometimes when people take it earlier, take it as a kind of a feeler taster. So let's give it a go. Let's see how it is. And that can be a bit of a, um, a gamble, really, because you've only got a limited number of sittings for the exam. So you want to feel that you're ready 100% when you go into it. And I suppose some people go into it thinking, oh, it's the easier of the two exams. So they know the CSA is this big, big brick wall that's in the middle of you and, and, and coming out of completion of training. And the AKT is often seen as the softer sort of, oh, yeah, we'll get through AKT, but the big one is CSA. And often they don't put the preparation in and you can struggle um, if you don't put the uh, needed sort of work into the AKT because it is a tough exam. So there's lots of reasons why I think people are doing it earlier and earlier. But if you are going to do it early, make sure you thought about some of these reasons that sometimes people can struggle if you think about taking it at your very first opportunity in ST2. But I suppose whenever you do take it, you know, I think you're going to need at least, probably on average, I've seen two to four months of really good preparation. Sometimes people start as far as six months in advance. But I suppose it's not, it's not about how long you work, it's about how efficiently you work. I'll talk a bit about some of the smart ways and things that you can think about when you're doing AKT preparation. Now, before you start to think about preparing, three really, really important things I think that you should be doing. Number one, look at and actually print out the RCGP AKT content guide. Go to their website, I'll Google it and it'll come. It's a quite long document, 60 odd pages, but it is your guide and should form your guide to your preparation. Now, when it comes to the RCGP content guide, yes, it's a long document and it can pull people off. But if you use that and you tailor your preparation against it, you'll know that by the time you come to the end of your preparation, by the time you walk into that exam room, that you've at least covered everything that you know can be tested in this exam. If you don't go through that content guide, you'll probably get a lot of questions that you think, oh, that was really random. But the information is there, it's telling you that these are the things you're gonna be tested on. So if you ignore that, you're gonna have a big chance of coming up against a lot of stuff that even if you've done loads of question banks, haven't been covered because you haven't looked through the checklist of things that you need to know for the exam. So number one, print the AKT content guide and use that as your guide. Number two, make sure you look at the past reports. The RCGP produced reports after each AKT exam. And they'll tell you simple things like who, you know, how many people passed and all that sort of stuff. But the key thing is the areas that people found difficult. Because when you, they're telling you that look, these are the areas that people find difficult, maybe it's diabetes management or maybe it's pediatric development, whatever it might be, you know there's a good chance that they might be tested again in the near future, either the next exam or the one after. Because they're telling you that, look, these are bits that people struggle on, you need to work a bit better on these. So I'd say look back at least to the last three or four AKT exam reports to the one that you're taking and look at the areas that people struggle with and make sure they go in your preparation plan because you've got to go those, go through those inside out and make sure you know them really, really well. And the third thing I would do is make sure you get a timeline in place. Some people say, okay, they book the exam or think about taking the exam and they just kind of wangle their way through preparation. There's no kind of, um, there's no idea as to how I'm going to do this, or how I'm going to achieve everything. It's just let's go and let's get it started and let's just run with it. The trouble with that is you're going to get to the end. There's going to be so many things. You're going to go, oh, God, I haven't looked at, I haven't thought about, you know, God, that's come to your mind. How am I going to have time to do this? Have a plan. Look at how many weeks have we got between now and the exam. Break it down, say I'm going to cover this by this day, this by this day, whether it's number of questions, whether it's topics that you're going to cover, whatever it is, make a plan and give yourself a couple of buffer weeks so that you have at least three or four weeks for the, before the actual exam date when you've got through all the material that you want to get through. That gives you a buffer zone, go through things that you haven't quite understood, re-go things a second time. But if you don't have a time plan in place, your revision and preparation is quite haphazard and the efficiency level goes so low and you don't tend to absorb or pick up as much as you want to. And then when you get to the exam day, you're not as primed and as prepped as you can be. So three things, print the AKT content guide, number one. Number two, look at all the past uh, um, summaries of all the AKT reports. And number three, get a timeline in place and then try and stick to it as rigidly as possible. So again, I get asked quite a lot, how do I prepare for the AKT exam? What's the best way to prepare? I don't think there's one way, but I think there's two main approaches that I see trainees use. Number one, there's the question bank approach where we just do lots and lots and lots of questions, maybe from two or three different question banks, and we rely on that and the little summaries underneath to get knowledge and build up knowledge and be prepared for the exam. That's one approach. The second approach is the revision approach where people will like maybe go through the content guide, look at all the topics you need to go through and then revise these topics. Look up the guidelines on, on CKS. They will look up, you know, Oxford Handbook of GP. They will read in you know, lots of websites and they'll learn things and revise, make notes, whatever it might be. Now, I don't think either one is better. I don't think either one is, is sufficient, to be honest. I think you want to be doing a bit of both. I think the people who feel most confident and most prepared when it comes to AKT are the ones who've done a bit of both. So maybe split your time. Yes, do lots of questions because you want to get your brain thinking about questions, problem solving. You don't want to just start doing that on the day itself. 
but also have a plan in terms of revising. You're going to have to go back and do a little bit of book work, particularly for areas, even if it's just areas that you don't like, bits that you find difficulty to cover. The question banks cannot cover everything in that, in that content guide, like we said. So if you can plan your preparation where you've got a little bit of background reading about some topics, plus doing questions, mix and match a little bit, it gives your brain that, that sort of chance to think about questions and get into that frame of mind, but you're also learning and developing in a structured way at the same time. So my answer when people say, what should I do? Do both. If you plan early enough, if you plan well, you've got plenty of time to do it. And the other question I get about this is, which is the best resource to use? Now, there's so many resources out there. There's lots of different question banks. There's lots of books out there. You know, which is the best one? Look, I don't know. I use the one that most people tend to use when it comes to preparing, but there are quite a few out there. But one thing I would say is don't fixate on one question bank. Because if you fix that on one question bank, your brain is very, very used to a particular way of writing questions. Then you get to the exam, different people have written those questions, and your brain gets thrown a bit. Because you're so used to almost preempting answers and think you got used to a certain way of question writing that you get thrown on the day. So have at least two sources of questions when it comes to selecting your question bank. Whichever banks are you, we do our own bank, there's lots of other banks out there, but make sure you have at least two. So you at least get two different styles of question going through your mind. Even if you have to go to the, you know, your hospital library and just rent out a couple of um, AKT question books, at least it gives you something different going through your mind, it's a bit of variety. So don't fixate on one bank and certainly don't just do question banks, have a balance between questioning yourself and learning as background as well. So the big day arrives, you're going to be tense, you're going to be nervous. I mean, the first thing you've got to do is make sure you get your identity stuff correct, things like passports, driving license, things like credit cards, all the details on the RCD brochure. Make sure you've got your documents in place. Uh, you're going to go there, there's going to be a short tutorial first, online tutorial about how to use the system, how to, to actually get through the, the AKT from a technical point of view. Um, there's also a, a tutorial that you can do online at any time in your own time beforehand. It's probably worth doing that so you're not flummoxed on that. It's one less thing to stress about. You can't take anything in with you to the room. Um, but you can leave things like water and, and toilet breaks, um, but they, they you don't get extra time for those things, so make sure that you um, you know you factor that in, I suppose. And there's an online timer, like I mentioned, on the screen, which is useful, so you can count down, think where you should be at an hour, two hours, for example. Results tend to come about three or four weeks later, so it's quite a, a long wait for, for people doing the AKT. You get your results via your ePortfolio, and not only do you get your actual mark, and whether you passed or not, you get a breakdown of the three components that we talked about um, earlier. So you get quite a, um, a, a detailed summary of how you perform in the AKT. So thinking back to my own experience of AKT, I still remember it quite, quite vividly. I remember not preparing for it very well, to be honest. I, I started off in quite a haphazard way, a bit of a random way. I perhaps didn't take it as seriously as I should have in the initial days. Um, about two weeks, three weeks into my preparation, I started doing some question banks. I realized, gosh, this, this is a lot more than I need to know than I thought here. And then I sat down, I took a whole day out, and I made a plan. I had about two months, and I said, look, by this week, I need to cover this, 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 and that covered a number of questions I have to do. That covered all the topics I needed to go through. And I really sort of sat down and knuckled down at that point when I realized that, gosh, this is a lot. And I needed to put something in place here to make sure I, I'm ready for the day. I got another day, I was quite nervous. I, I was running late because there's an accident on the route and, you know, all that kind of stuff, maybe tense as it was. The first, I'd say, 10, 12 questions, I was in a bit of a kind of adrenaline rush days as you are, both exams and also worrying that I wasn't actually going to make the exam in the first place. But actually, then I just got settled down. And because I did quite a few kind of time mocks myself, I was okay. I was able to sort of manage where I was at each particular part of the exam um, according to time. Now, I didn't run out of time. I didn't have to rush at the end, luckily. I know a lot of people do struggle with time, so that's why doing mocks and things are really important before I just to get acclimatized to that sort of pressure and speed that you need to the exams. I remember walking out, like most people do, thinking, God, that was really random. You know, did I get 100% or did I get 0%? You know, you go through days where you think you've, you've absolutely breezed it, and then you get through the days where you think, oh, I, I flunked it completely. Um, and luckily, when I got the, 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 the result, it was quite a good pass, so, so I was okay in the end. But I remember that day very well, and I'm sure you remember yours when you go through not only the preparation, but also the actual exam day itself. Um, and probably more importantly, the long wait between the exam and the results. But it will come, and in most cases, as you know, um, it's going to be a nice, good pass. 
So I hope those videos was useful. A bit about what we do. We run various things for AKT. We have our main flagship Mock AD courses. We have our AKT webinars. We have our AKT posters. We have our AKT videos, articles, things on statistics, graphs, all the bits that people tend to struggle with. So please have a look at some of those. Links to other things should be down below if they interest you in any way. If you have any other videos that you need making about AKT, topics within AKT, you know, we love making videos. So please send those suggestions and ideas our way. Have a look at this, the rest of this YouTube channel. Subscribe if you find it, think it might be useful to you. We have regular videos on all aspects of GP training um, and lots of other things with the medicine as well. Um, we have our AKT CSA support group on Facebook, so please join that if you think it might be a benefit to you. Hopefully we'll get to meet some of you guys in the future. A final kind of point about AKT, a positive point, you can pass this exam if you, if you prepare for it in the right way, if you're structured, if you're efficient, if you're targeted, if you know where you need to be before you start, all those things make for a clear, easy pass for AKT. But people do struggle. It's got to be taken, you can't be taken lightly, you've got to take it seriously. Um, people do struggle when it comes to AKT um, if preparation is not quite intact. Hope we'll get to meet you at some point soon. Take care.